Hello everybody and welcome to section 3 part 1 where we're going to be introducing SQLite and databases. So when you're doing any sort of data analysis or collection, you're going to be quickly finding that you need to store the data that you're collecting somewhere. So the initial idea might be to just, I don't know, store that data in a text file or maybe even a CSV or comma separated uh, bars. The problem here are values. The problem here is that these files can and will easily become corrupted and navigating them later on can be very tedious and cumbersome for your program. So instead, people use databases. And databases, they're going to be easier to reorganize, they're going to be easier to navigate, and databases, almost all of them come with locking mechanisms, so you're not going to ever find yourself making multiple edits at any one time, and thus corrupting the database. So, uh, we're going to be talking first about SQL light or SQLite. So this is one of the most easy and lightweight databases out there, if not the lightest. Um, SQLite, as its name suggests, is a extremely light version of an SQL database. So this means that we're able to use some, not all, but some of the major SQL queries. Uh, but a lot or some are not going to be included because again, it's a very lightweight version. So the usual ones like inserting and selecting data and updating, deleting, you know, and various commands like limit and all of that are included. So you can do a lot of basic stuff with it. So SQLite is included in your standard library, so you don't need to install it or do anything more there. And at least in this video, the version that we're using is SQLite 3. Uh, eventually, it's conceivable you might have a later version, but they should all pretty much act the same because while SQLite 3 is a module, most of what we code is actually SQL, and SQL is actually its own programming language entirely, and so it's unlikely that's going to do much changing from versions of SQLite. So now, let's talk about databases and how they work, and then also how SQLite works. So an SQL database is a collection of tables. And in fact, let me open up the trusty paint so I can draw for you guys. Now, I'm a pretty good artist, so don't get jealous. I've had a lot of practice. So a database, most people kind of have a, a misconception of what a database is. My handwriting is worse than this, so be, be appreciative. So a database is actually the collection of tables, okay, within that database. And the tables might be all a little different, different sizes and shapes and all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. The database is just the collection of tables. So what are the tables? Now the tables are actually what people consider or think of when they think of a database. So the tables contain uh, columns and rows, and then the columns have data types and you know different data types, maybe different lengths, sizes, and shapes, and so on. But generally, a table, you can think of a table, in most cases, in, a, in, a, um, in an SQL database anyways, you can think of it as a lot like a CSV file. Uh, they've got columns and rows, and they don't have a third dimension, usually. Now, there are some tables that do, and there's ways that you can kind of mimic a third dimension and stuff with uh, tables. We're not going to be worrying too much about that, but generally you can think of it like uh, like a CSV. So, yeah, so these are your tables. And again, most what most people envision as a database is actually a table. It's not a database. The database is really just the collection of all of the tables that you have. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, if a table is a lot like a CSV, why are we using tables? And why are we dealing with these databases? They're confusing. I have to learn a new language, and this just is horrible. Well, SQL is in, in, in tables and databases, but the, the point of a database and the point of a file are two very different things. So files are pretty much optimized to be used and viewed all at once and by a user, okay? Whereas a database and tables within that database, 
they are optimized to be used, accessed in you know small chunks and whatnot from the a machine, a computer. And so they serve completely different purposes. While both could be used, you can you there are programs or you can even view the database yourself if you have like a SQL. Uh, database. There are database viewers for, say, you've got a web server, or even with uh, SQLite, there are database viewers for SQLite. So there are ways for you as the user to view your database, but generally the interaction and the use of a database is for programs, and the use of, like, say, a CSV for spreadsheets is for humans. Okay, But of course, we can have programs also reading and understand C CSVs at, in a rate much quicker than, um, than humans and all of that. Now, the only other thing that I want to briefly touch on before we hop into actually coding with our SQLite is that a, a table contains, like we were saying, rows and columns. But then those rows and columns, well, the rows are just entries in the database, but the columns must be defined in advanced. So when you build a, a, a table, you have to use some foresight because to change a table later on, while possible, can present some serious problems, especially if you want to like add new columns or something like this. Also, you have to decide on your data type for the columns. So your columns have various data types. There's things like integers, real numbers, or floats, and then you've got text. And then with SQL, there's like 50 plus data types that you could possibly use. And depending on your application and what you're trying to build, uh, various ones may be the better choice for you, and you'll just have to kind of test. Luckily for us, SQLite, since it's so light, has really a lot fewer options, and it will make learning it a lot simpler. And also, for most people, if you're not building a database that is like, you know, millions of rows deep, it probably doesn't matter that much which data type you use. But if you are someone that has a database that is like 10 million or 20 million, uh, then data types start mattering. It's, it makes a huge difference sometimes. It might be 50% of your performance can come from using a better data type or index, but um, for most people, that performance is the difference between, you know, of like, let's say 50 milliseconds. Well, no one's going to notice that, so you're wasting your time trying to optimize. But if that difference is like five seconds and you're, you know, you're hosting a website or something, that's a, a big difference. So anyways, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how we create a database and then actually add a table within it with SQLite. Luckily for us, this is really, really simple. You can have a, a local MySQL database, for example. MySQL is, is what most websites use, uh, and we'll be using MySQL later on. You can have a local MySQL database, but sometimes it is a massive pain to set up. So a lot of people, when they have local things or testing versions of websites or whatever, they actually use SQLite locally. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.